much. It's a big pleasure for us to uh, welcome to you all to this Congress of uh, Applied Informatics. Uh, as a member of the Anthrop Social Anthropology and Social Psychology uh, Department, we are very glad to, to have been able to contribute to this Congress. Thanks so much for, to the organizer for making this possible. And uh, just uh, a few words from my part, because the, the main thing is what comes from the contributors. Just to say that we are, I am especially glad because uh, you know that there is uh, this interdisciplinarity that uh, Concha has mentioned is very important in, in the sense that uh, we as uh, sociologists or social science scientists has uh, for a long time uh, 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 research uh, information society but uh, mainly uh, social processes and not uh, not very much the the interrelation with uh, technology in this sense i would like to highlight that this year uh, the, the, in the opening uh, session of the of this uh, year in the complutense university we had a, a lecture about algorithms in uh, from a, a professor from the informatic faculty and uh, it was very interesting uh, and for me it uh, really highlighted the fact that we need to to uh, as social scientists to be able to work together with informatics in the sense that we need to to uh, to be able to to put to the fore the the social consequences and the social processes involved in the, the development of algorithms. In this sense, I would like just to say, to, to, to mention that I'm very interested in the contribution you are putting, uh, putting on in this uh, Congress and very eager to, to hear you all. So, thanks so much to you. Buenos días. A todos y a todas, good morning. Welcome to be here in, uh, in uh, Complutense University of Madrid uh, and in this wonderful city, Madrid. Uh, it's a big pleasure for me to co organize this Congress uh, with uh, Jose Maria Nafria, Hector Flores, Marcelo Leon, Manuela Garcia, and the other collaborators. Uh, for this event, and it's a big pleasure for me to have uh, uh, to, to receive for this conference uh, so many papers, so many interesting research from different parts of the world, from different uh, disciplines, and it's interesting uh, uh, to see how uh, informatics, applied informatics, affect every part of our life. Uh, in the last 10 years, uh, we observe the digital transformation of our uh, everyday life and also in our uh, professional settings. In uh, every discipline of the science, uh, the digital transformation has affected our, our uh, practice from biology to chemistry, from social science to humanities. Uh, some of uh, the research that uh, we listen in these uh, three days, because the, the, the part of the Congress started yesterday in uh, Udima, uh, come from different perspectives, but uh, with uh, a unique focus uh, to try to, to offer uh, innovative solutions to the big problems of the society, like uh, the, clim the climate change, the try to, to find a solution for the sustainable development goals, genders, like uh, Concepcion Villanueva mentioned before, it's a, an important uh, uh, it's an important goal that we need uh, to to improve in our research to introduce the the gender aspects in our research in our career in our degrees, because for example the Polytechnic University has a, a, a little part uh, of female students. And it's very important uh, uh, to open uh, uh, this uh, career and to try to, <coughs> to fight this uh, gender gap. Uh, another uh, gap that we have observed in uh, informatics and in this digital transformation is the open or closed science. Uh, we need to think our research uh, for the open society, open size, open access, not only of the results, but also of, uh, for the data. Yeah, the, the raw data, the, the data of our research, we need to, to share 
with the population because uh, many of his research uh, are funded with the public uh, money from the from the country and it's very important that other countries maybe less developed country can access to this data and uh, can compare this data with the their data to to find an innovative solution for them i think this is an uh, ambitious event for this because uh, we come from different disciplines very different disciplines but uh, uh, we share uh, this um, this passion, this, uh, this view to, to give uh, on a unique focus, on unique um, solution for this uh, general problem. But for this, it's very important that we enjoy in these two days and we try to construct a dialogue and we try to construct a global interdisciplinary network that uh, maybe start here or start from the last edition of this Congress and uh, try to collaborate in different projects in the next years. So um, I'm very, very enthusiastic uh, to be here and uh, welcome. Uh, and I hope that you enjoy of this conference and uh, of this seat in these days. Thank you. Hi. OK. Thank you, everyone, so for coming here. Many people so from very long distances. And, uh, and actually having many troubles in the way. Uh, some of them actually because of the problems uh, couldn't make it on time for accidents or other reasons. And, uh, and others did it uh, making really uh, an effort uh, to break the agenda and to, and to, and to jump the obstacles that, that existed in the way. And, uh, and there exist also many obstacles in the way of developing technologies. And, and I want to express my gratitude. And I think that is a, a real benefit for uh, applied uh, technology, for applied informatics uh, to be hosted in this house. Uh, because we are in the house of the science of, of society and politics and how can we solve the problems of society? And this is something that that in in the technologies in the technology or technology so informatics in particular uh, are not so used to uh, is 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 a is important I think and uh, and is really a, a benefit I think uh, that they opened this house uh, to to make possible that that we discuss here. So how can we design technology? to make that a, that a global, sustainable information society can happen. So we need to cooperate. We, we have an important gap to, to also to, to, to cross. And this gap is the, the, the one that exists between the, the hard science and the soft science. So the social science, for example, are at one side and at the other side are the more technological and natural sciences. And, and, and this is an opportunity in, uh, to, to jump over this, this kind of gap and to, and to make alliances that, that we really need. I, I just want to, to make a, a short um, a, a, so, uh, illustration of what we are trying to do. If you have paid attention to the, so to the posters that we have, the roll-ups, you will see a beautiful painter. That painter is from, from Bosco. Uh, that you can visit, by the way, in El Prado is one of the of the treasuries that we have here in Madrid, among many others, from the Universal Painter, and uh, and what what is representing here Hieronymus Boscus in the in this in this Garden of the Delights is like the creation. So the uh, is a kind of representation for building up a global information society. It is transformed actually. The, this this painter of of the Bosque, and uh, what is being shown there, uh, what Jeronimus Bosco shows, are different forms uh, in in his this, in his painter. You see all very very different uh, uh, so forms of bodies that do not exist. Some can uh, get along, and others don't get along. And what happened at the end is that 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 they some some uh, uh, good. Uh, interplay among the different parts happens, and uh, and then and then a nice a nice world 
uh, so it's, it's being produced, so to say. So it's a metaphorical approach, but I think it's a nice uh, um, allegorical uh, approach to what we are trying to do. And again, my gratitude for all the people who came for the, for the hosters and, uh, and all the organizers that are many, you can check it in the, in the, in the website. Uh, all have worked for longer time, the volunteers. Uh, so special gratitude for all of you and participants, of course. Uh, good morning. Okay, thank you so much for coming. This is a very nice experience for me, actually. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I want to make a brief presentation about ICAI, the International Conference on Applied Informatics. Uh, ICAI is an initiative that was born last year, actually. This is the second conference, the second edition of the conference. And um, we are really happy for everything is happening in this conference. So, um, uh, I think... So, um, this conference, uh, well, I come from Colombia. I work in the University Distrital in Bogota, Colombia. And last year, we made uh, the conference, the first edition of the, of the conference in Bogota. So now, uh, we are uh, really happy to be here. And we want to thank uh, Jose Maria Diaz Nafria from the University Udima and also Simone Bailey from the University Complutense because they offered us all the support, all required support to, to have the conference here in, in Spain. Actually, we would like to move over the world in order to uh, make this conference stronger and also make this conference international. So, I think, I think you need to put the, the, the mouse in the other, in the other yeah. screen. Mm -hmm. Just one second, please. Okay. That's right. That's right. Is, is it That's right. Okay. Okay. Where is it? That's right. So, yeah. Okay. This one? So, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in, in this edition of the conference, uh, we have the Universidad Distrital from Colombia. We have the Universidad Tado from Colombia. Of course, the University Complutense. Uh, University uh, Nacional de Loja from, from Ecuador, Udima from, from Spain, also the Bitrum Research Group and the Universidad Estatal uh, Santa, Peninsula Santa Elena from, from Spain. We also are proud because uh, we received the support from Springer and also from, from Erasmus. Uh, so many thanks to these contributors. In addition, it is important to mention that uh, we received uh, 98 papers in this edition of the conference, and we published 38 papers, uh, which are published in the, in the volume uh, 1051 uh, from the series Communications in Computer Information Science by Springer. Also, we had uh, some um, workshops, and we received 30 papers, uh, which are published in SEO workshop proceedings. Um, in addition, we want to thank the keynote speakers. We now have eight keynote speakers in this conference. So, uh, well, they have, uh, well, they, they will give uh, some interesting uh, keynote uh, speeches uh, in this conference. So, really, we are, we are very grateful with them. Um, we uh, made a call for workshops a couple of months ago, and we accepted seven workshops. So these workshops received uh, up to 80 papers, and we published 30 papers in the sales workshop proceedings. So uh, actually, they are already published, which is very, very important for us, because um, we can now access to all uh, the academic material that the conference is producing. Finally, I want to show some, some specific numbers. Um, we have uh, in this edition of the conference uh, authors from 17 countries. Uh, we think it's a really, really interesting number. Uh, we have 
authors from Austria, Colombia, Ecuador, some, some countries in Latin America, some countries in Europe, uh, in Africa, in Asia. So it is uh, interesting because we, we could have the attention uh, from uh, several countries, uh, the attention of, of several people in the world. So this is uh, interesting because we think we are uh, increasing uh, our, our community in the world. So, um, we think we we are in the right way in this in this in this topic. In addition, uh, we had a very interesting uh, program committee. Uh, it is made up of uh, 87 persons, uh, 87 people from 23 different countries. So it is also very interesting, and all of them uh, hold a PhD degree in different areas. So. Uh, we are trying to uh, get a very strong conference and with the support of these people, uh, we, we think we can do it. Finally, uh, as I mentioned before, we received 98, 98 papers in different topics of informatics. And uh, here we can see that in the, in the blue columns, we can see the uh, accepted papers in the different topics and in the red column, the rejected papers. So we can see that uh, we have um, a strong uh, reviewing process, which uh, we can ensure that the material published in this conference is also a uh, very interesting and very important material from the uh, academic point of view. So that's all for uh, so far. Then thank you so much. And again, welcome for, for coming to ECAI 2020. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Uh, once today's session cycle has been inaugurated, uh, now I will uh, present the first keynote of the, of the day which title is Designing for a Global Sustainable Information Society. Uh, the author of this paper, Volkan Hofkittner, uh, he's a retired associate professor of technology at the Technische Universität Bien, Austria. Uh, and he has also been a professor in, a, in the other universities, such such as uh, Salzburg, uh, Austria, Oberta, Leon, Spain, Federal da Bahia, Brazil, among many others. He has got a long and great career, and you could start your presentation. Thank Thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm very happy to have uh, to make it in time because I was one of those people who had difficulties um, to arrive, but uh, I could do it. So I'm happy. I'm also happy that I'm here in this at this faculty because I this is my education, and uh, but. I have worked more than 25 years at the Vienna University of Technology and I have the Venia Legendi in technology assessment. So you see I try to bridge these two things. And um, today I would like to give you a kind of insight into how I think that uh, this bridge is needful today. Uh, I have three parts. Yeah, maybe I uh, I was told that I should uh, try to hurry up or so. So how how, how long shall I can, can, can I or what is it? Because I can maybe try to because it is one hour. Was it before half an hour? Uh, okay, and then last discussion. Yes. Okay, good. Half an hour. Okay, look, I, I have it, it runs here. So, uh, it is three parts um, uh, I would like to present to you. The first is I would like to confront you with a very uh, broad uh, notion, a very broad concept of design, uh, which is unusually broad, but you will see uh, why I like this, um, to have it a, a, a very abstract definition of design. And it, it, it um, 
uh, will deal with three topics. Then the second part uh, the, uh, um, uh, is then the question. Okay. <laughs> the second question is um, when we know now what is design, uh, or when we have a, a notion of design, we need to ask how can we um, put design into context? That is, uh, what is the current state of the world if we want to speak of design? So, um, and uh, what should be done uh, uh, as to design according to the state of the world as it is now? And the third uh, part is then, uh, what does our world get now from design so far? And uh, what would it need? And what can we, how can we make the world get that what it needs? This is the third part, okay? So, um, oh, sorry. I'm starting from, um, from an idea of Robert Rosen, a biologist, uh, in his book of 1991, uh, Life Itself. Uh, where he had uh, coined the term of the modeling relation. That is, on the, on the left side, you see, um, uh, you see the systems, uh, the re you see real world systems, and on the right side, you see how we try to understand it, how, how we try to make an understanding of it. And uh, uh, I want to use this uh, modeling uh, relation to add, to extend it a little bit in order to make you uh, understand what I understand by design. So, um, but before I do this, I just want to talk about these two errors. Uh, what Robert Rosen says is that these two errors are things which are not um, uh, which, which are rather art. It is rather art what you are doing. If you generate knowledge from the uh, from 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 the systems which are in, in, in here in, in the real world, and if you uh, then feed it back to um, to um, to the uh, to uh, to the real world, then both these uh, activities are not. Um, um, deterministic. So you don't know how it really works. But his idea was still that on the right side you have uh -huh, okay. you have um, uh, entailing uh, you have you have um, uh, inferential uh, uh, connections uh, as to the logics, as to human logics, and on the, while well, on the uh, left hand, you will have causal relations uh, in the real world. So this does not uh, uh, really uh, 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 correspond to each other in a one-to-one -one way, because. Uh, um, what you do on the right side is just simulating. On the left hand, you have uh, systems as they work by itself, and then you try to make a model, and the model is always a simulation. This is what he says. This is what I take, but I want to add here something that on the right hand also uh, this uh, entailing and this, uh, this uh, uh, let's say, this logical uh, relations are not really uh, so, because I want to add uh, a, a third part, and if you see this, you have three different levels of, 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 of knowledge here. You have the factual findings, you have true generalizations, and you have valid applications. So if you have from level to level, you have a new uh, quality, and this new quality uh, makes it that the, there is emergence and emergence cannot be predicted. Therefore, you cannot deduct from the basic uh, level 
the next level or the content of the next level. And therefore you have already here a kind of uh, relationship which is, uh, as he says, uh, which are the arrows uh, outside. So I would like to term this the designing relation because uh, you have then the application uh, uh, um, uh, level also inside and what you are doing is always you want to solve problems and this is what you want to do if you design systems and whatever you do that is uh, if you intervene in the systems if you invent new systems if you innovate something um, uh, these are all uh, activities which design devices so all of that is designing. So, this is the most abstract uh, level of, uh, of, um, of, 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 of design. So, and there are three things to be said. The first one is uh, there's a social embedding, embedding. What does it mean? Whenever we design technology, we do interact with a social system. And we do design this social system itself. The device is embedded in the social system. The device turns the social system into a techno-social system, or as it is often called, a, so, a socio-technical system. A social system consists of actors, which are the elements of a system, and the social relations, the relations of these actors. The actors produce the social relations, and the social relations determine how the effects of social synergy are provided. Social synergy is are the commons is the common good in the commons so just to uh, show this quickly to you if we have a system a social system it which has two levels then we can start on the micro level we have social actors we uh, who interact and uh, together if they interact in a special way they can produce common relations they can produce the relations and these relations are commoning relations because commoning means to share the commons produce commons and uh, and, and to be provided by the commons uh, which are the synergy effects the social synergy effects and these are then provided to the social actors in interaction a techno social system uh, you have the on the left if we start again on the left hand side um, down um, we have the producers of technology, they produce technology and this is device, construct, maintain, modify and the relations become technical structure. That is, this is methods or procedures or tools, all of this is technology and these are provided and for, for the application, for the support, for the enhancement, for the augmentation, etc. Um, to the producers of technology and make them producers and users in one. And this is uh, what is called producers. Uh, this was a German guy, Axel Bruns, who called it like this. Uh, so the techno social system consists of actors who are the producers and users, that is, the producers of technology. And that's very important. So you see, you have in a techno social system, you have both in it. You have not only the technological devices, but you also have, uh, you have uh, the people, so to speak, inside. Um, um, and technology that is incorporated into the social relations and turns those relations into a techno structure. And the techno structure that is the social relations that determine the provision of the synergy effects yielded by the common technological device. Second uh, feature of design, it, it, it's, it's about the mechanism and about the problem of mechanistic uh, approaches. Whenever we design technology, we design mechanisms for the fulfillment of social functions. Technologies mediate the fulfillment of social structures, uh, sorry, sorry, of social functions. So mechanization is the process of designing technologies, methods, procedures, tools. Mechanization functionalizes cause-effect relationships, which are there in existing social or natural systems into means and relationships. 
such that the cause is a means and the effect is the end. Um, Francis Heiligen showed this uh, several years ago, uh, the, the difference between, uh, let's say, real world efficient causation according to less than strict determinism, uh, how it is in reality, uh, how the causes are in, real in reality, because you have always emergence, you cannot have uh, a one-to-one -one mapping. But if you uh, believe in, uh, in, in strict determinism, then you would say there are bijective relations. And what we do with technology is we do so as if they were like this. And we need to do so because if I want to, if I push here the button, then I want the computer to do only one activity, which is shown to you and nothing else. If it does not work, then we have problems. Therefore, we try to, uh, to mechanize all this. So uh, Aristotle had four causes. I, I, I will just uh, be quick here. He had the efficient cause, and on the other hand, he had the final cause, which makes the efficient cause end directed. And we have two more causes. We have the material cause. Uh, if we have, if we look at the synchronic um, uh, levels here, and we have the formal cause, which feeds back to the material cause and shapes the uh, material cause. So this would be a good picture of having these four for uh, Aristotelian causes here. That is, the functionalization of cause-effect relationships directs the efficient cause towards the required end by the final cause and gives the material cause the required form, which is coming from the formal cause. Ideal, typically, technologies would work best with bijective relations. For that reason, mechanization attempts to curb the self-organization dynamics of social or natural systems and restrict the space of possibilities to make them predictable. However, mechanization should be appropriate. The constraints should be as little as possible, but as much as necessary. So I just also have a kind of uh, showing this to you in, a, in, in the picture. So if you have strict determinism, there's only one possibility. There's yeah, all the space of possibilities is shrink to one possibility only. And all around, you have a space of impossibilities. Indeterminism would say the opposite, would say everything is possible. And um, the so-called less than strict determinism, which is apt to understand self-organizing systems and emergent systems, is like this. You have a kind of space of possibilities and outside of this uh, uh, diagram, you have the space of impossibilities. And what I wanted to say is, if we uh, apply technology, if we, if we want to have a mechanism, then we try to squeeze this area as much as possible, or let's say we should not do it as much as possible, as, 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 as much as necessary, but uh, it should be um, not, uh, would be not good to do away with all emergent features in in uh, um, in, uh, in the real world. Third part now, the, maybe the most important comes now. It's ethics. So the design should be ethically aligned. Why? Whenever we design technology, we take over responsibility, willingly or not, and we do this in two different aspects. First, we take over responsibility for the functionality of the device. The question is, does the mechanism effectively lead to the end for which technology shall be designed? That is, is it functional? This is a matter of fact. Anyway, we can look upon it in a decontextualized manner from a mere technical point of view, which is uh, not enough, though. So the second is, we take over responsibility also for the meaningfulness of the device. That is, does the end for which technology shall be designed make sense? That is, does it promote a social value? Does it conform with a social norm? This is a matter of ethics. We can see the whole picture only when in the context of the social. So, 
if we try to responsibly reflect both the functionality and the meaningfulness of the device, uh, the design process becomes a visioneering process. process. Visioneering comes from vision and from engineering. You engineer a vision. So the vision is a desired future state of the social system and it shall be engineered by support of technologies designed for that purpose. The default value of a meaningful technology can be put as follows. It shall ultimately serve a vision of the good society. That's a term which uh, has come up in the last 20 years. Individuals living the good life, as Aristotle understood it, and cultivating the common good. So, um, okay. If we start again in this picture, uh, left bottom, so we have individuals that live a good life and because they live a good life they improve the meaningfulness of the techno structure for boosting the common good and this boosting of the common good allows for the rise of more individuals that better live a good life and so on so it is a virtuous cycle but it can also be a vicious cycle and the vicious cycle uh, has problems uh, in the in the arrows here so you have uh, individuals which need which are forced to take care of themselves only because they are excluded from the commons but this undermines the meaningfulness of the techno structure because the techno structure is enclosed for private interests and this enclosure allows for the rise of more and more self-caring individuals which are excluded more and more from the commons. So, these were the three aspects of design. Second, in order to flesh out socially embedded, mechanistically balanced and ethically aligned design, we need to understand the kind of world we are living in. So, what is the vision? Thriving or surviving of our species is at stake. Seen from a complex system, you global challenges arise from human-human relationships, from human-nature relationships, and from human-technology relationships, which are not functional anymore. The evolution of humanity faces a great bifurcation, as I said. Uh, global challenges might inflict extinction. extinction. So you have the extinction rebellion, if you know this new social movement, and I'm happy that you have this term. <laughs> Before I use the term exterminism of humanity. At the same time, global challenges can be mastered through a transformation into a global sustainable information society. What does it mean? So here you have this big bifurcation. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, so civilization is at the crossroads. We have global challenges, which, uh, uh, which you see in a multi-crisis in all techno, eco, and social subsystems. And, um, uh, and we have a kind of tipping point. We will face a tipping point. A tipping point is a point after which you cannot change anything. So far, we still have a window. But uh, the, maybe the window will be closed in maybe 10 years. We do not exactly know. So, uh, and we have a space of possible trajectories, and these possible trajectories include two different things. The best way would be a breakthrough to a higher level of complexity, a rise of complexity, which is an integration of differentiated interdependent social systems into a single, in evolutionary system theory, we call it meta system or a supra system. Uh, and this would be the global sustainable information society or the worst thing is a decline of complexity and the disintegration or falling apart of civilization which is a breakdown. So what is the vision of the global sustainable information society? It's a vision of a framework of conditions for thriving and surviving at the great bifurcation. Uh, and it has three features, globality, sustainability, informationality. 
end, it gives a new and coherent uh, definition of globality and sustainability and informationality, which are not uh, uh, so clear in, in the mainstream thinking of it. So a new understanding of globality. Globality is the envisioned state of world society as an integrated meta or suprasystem that is after the establishment for the first time in history of commoning relations on a higher order level for practically all parts of humanity and practically all fields of human social life. So globalization is just uh, uh, the social relations of commoning will have been universalized up to the planetary level. And it's a transformational tendency towards globality. The second thing, sustainability is not ecological only, it is much more. It is the envisioned state of a reorganization of the social relations between all and throughout any parts of humanity pursuing to the commoning relations on the higher level, such that anthropogenic system dysfunctions can be kept below the threshold, a threshold the, trans the transgression of which would endanger the continuation of social evolution. So the social systems organizational relations, the role of which is to provide, is to provide social synergy, will sustain human and social life. And this tendency can be called sustainabilization. And the third thing, informationality, here we come now to ITs. We are approaching, we are approaching ITs. Informationality uh, is a term which I coined because there was no term so far. It's the envisioned state of informational actors and social systems in which they will have caught up with the complexity they are challenged by, they are challenged by, to such an extent that they dispose of the capacity to create requisite information. Requisite information on the social dysfunctions and on reorganizing the relations appropriately. And then we can call it the actors and the systems will be informed actors and informed systems. And informationalization would be then the transformational tendency towards this informationality. And this is just on the, still on the social side of, uh, of the whole thing. But technology comes, comes, comes in. So how can we implement the vision? We, we need a step-by-step -step engineering of building blocks as to this vision, of this vision. A building block, what is a building block, is an actualization of a potential in the here and now that anticipates the vision. That is, the desired grand design is uh, envisioned, is, sorry, is, is, is um, anticipated. Uh, Ernst Bloch, a philosopher, German philosopher, called this a concrete utopia. I have something in the brackets, but I will, over, I will skip it. Next, only those technologies qualify as building blocks that can be universalized up to the level of the vision. Okay, so meaningful technologies do this. The design of meaningful technologies means, it means the design of technologies that mediate the tendencies of globalization, sustainabilization and informationalization. And what does it mean? The provision of worldwide commons the provision of safeguards against the deprivation of worldwide commons, and third, the provision of knowledge for the installation of safeguards against the deprivation of worldwide commons. And here you see how this hangs together in order to master the global challenges. Given, that the, given the great bifurcation, the default value of meaningful technologies is now specified. The good society is, instance, is instantiated by the Global Sustainable Information Society. It provides the conditions for humanity surviving and thriving. Those that live a good life are instantiated by global citizens, and the common good is instantiated by a worldwide disclosure of the commons. At any step, a check is needed to evaluate how much the device could contribute to the technical purpose and whether or not a technical purpose is still qualifying the device for a building block of the Global Sustainable Information Society. And adjustments can follow in either level. Um, I also 
want to mention the participatory approach that uh, those who are affected by the devices, they should be empowered to have a say in the whole design process. Okay, the third part, and I will skip the third part of the third part, just to tell you, uh, whenever we design technology, we make a selection between different visions and different engineering. That is, we select. And our selection will be decisive for the path of social evolution systems will take. So you see that uh, there is also evolution of systems, of social systems. And by designing technology, we intervene into this because we make the selection. Either we build up the global sustainable information society or not. The choice is ours. Um, I give you some literature uh, from 2019. Paul Mason uh, wrote a book which is called Clear Bright Future, a Radical Defense of the Human Being. And uh, he he identifies four fields in which uh, uh, capitalism has has made use of IT in a way that uh, we have now we are facing new things, and he has uh, 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 he has um, solutions what to do about this. So he wants to combat monopolies and the price fixing. He wants to combat precarious work and stagnant wages, he wants to combat rent-seeking, and he wants to fight information hoarding. So, and this is what you can read in the book, but I have no time now to go into this. What I would like to do is just um, another hint to sociology. So there was Ivan Illich, an Austrian or a Latin American Austrian um, writer, uh, who wrote the book Tools for Conviviality. It was in 73, and um, that is, he talked about technology, and he used the term co conviviality. He said, um, um, such a society in which modern technologies serve politically interrelated individuals rather than managers, I will call convivial. I've chosen convivial as a technical term to designate a modern society of responsibly limited tools. Well, um, he took the term from Spanish, from convivialidad, and uh, this is uh, an, another term for having uh, social relations which are commoning, I would say. Today we would say this. Um, French-speaking um, intellectuals five years ago uh, wrote a convivialist manifesto. This is the second book on the right hand. And Ah, sorry. No, but what, what, what did I do? What is going on? Yes. Okay. Um, I the wrong, the wrong key. Okay. So, human failure. Um, yes. So, um, and they say there is one problem. We are not convivialist. That is, we cannot solve the problem so far uh, how to manage rivalry and violence and how to compete with one another without resorting to mutual slaughter and instead cooperate. So, and this is what these sociologists and philosophers are saying. And so, convivialism is something which is a, a, a very good term for me to know what it is, what you want to, what you want to um, uh, achieve if you design technologies. As with any technology, yeah, we need to understand this. Uh, the impact of IT on the social system is ambivalent as it can increase or reduce frictions in the achievement of synergy. That is, there are two, two, two options. On the one hand, it can be instrumentalized for purposes that are detrimental to the reclaiming of the commons and thus destroy conviviality. It can reinforce existing social dysfunctions or spawn new social dysfunctions. On the other hand, 
it entails uh, also a potential that can smoothen out exclusions from the commons and help manufacture conviviality. It can mitigate or even eliminate existing and prevent new social dysfunctions. Thus, design can be selected because we have these two possibilities and we can choose. And we choose every time also if we don't know it. Um, we can design technologies such that they become building blocks for the global sustainable information society. We can resist the design of applications that do not comply with conviviality as well as insist on the design of applications that do comply with conviviality. So, um, I think I have already used up my time. Um, I just will, uh, will come to the end and show maybe the last picture, the last slide. So that's it. So the conclusion of what I would have wanted to say in the third part now um, is that I would say let's take action for the Global Sustainable Information Society and we have different roles. So we have roles as computer and engineering experts. We are working for state or for private businesses, for private companies and we can demand red lines uh, for instance uh, that we say we don't want to collaborate with the military uh, we are teachers we are we also have the role of teachers we can plant the seeds of proper values with the next generations uh, we are also civil society members and we are citizens we can address politics and we can demand transparency on algorithms uh, we can demand taxes from the digital monopolies uh, because to uh, support the common good and eventually uh, we can also demand their split up. This is a, a, a big discussion now going on. You know, Google, Facebook, etc. split them up. And have public open spaces instead because they also have try to catch to make platforms for, for media and we are also users and we are consumers so uh, I'm a consumer unfortunately I'm accustomed to apples and therefore I'm sitting here because uh, the connection was a little bit difficult to do because it's just apple and so um, but uh, we can we can choose different uh, computers and different software and so on uh, we can uh, also as users we can just as users we can demand from the companies uh, information on what information they have from us and we need not to accept the default settings of, of any of those uh, devices and um, yeah that's it so that's it thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. Well done. It's time to uh, questions and suggestions about uh, this presentation. Does anyone any questions about this? I, I, I may, I, I want to make a, a, a short comment. Uh, regarding so his point about sustainability and I, and I think it was not stressed in the presentation uh, on the one hand uh, so he's the president of an institute which is the Institute for a Global Sustainable Information okay. Society which uh, fits so perfectly well uh, with with our conference as a whole uh, on the other hand uh, being consistent with his uh, with his position, uh, he he said that he couldn't arrive here by plane because that's not sustainable. So he took the train so from Vienna to here. But uh, uh, it's interesting uh, to see. So regarding so the the big challenges that we have, and yesterday it was mentioned. So the the movement of the so the, the what we have with the students that were that were claiming for changes. Uh, in what we are doing, and in particularly, for example, in Germany, was was 
Uh, so the movement has has been very popular. Many people is following, and and then Angela Merkel uh, said that that we need to to facilitate train so the the so that the train is not so expensive, uh, and. Uh, it, we need, for example, regarding transportation, uh, to find solutions. So, in the, in globalization, he has been speaking about globalization and, and the glo globalization. And as yesterday was mentioned, uh, so the information technologies has to has done uh, practically the contrary that what was expected. So, uh, we are having more movements, so more transportation needs. And, uh, and we don't have sustainable transportation. So what is happening with information? What are we doing with information when information t should enable us uh, to, to see what is better? So information understood in its basic terms as what uh, enables to make a change, what enables to make a decision. So we are making wrong decisions. So what is the information here? So for uh, informatics, so informatics should provide means to, to work with information and to make that that proper proper solutions are being taken. For example, uh, for uh, for uh, for for his trip, uh, we see that, that that it was not that easy, and uh, and he couldn't sleep because there was problems in the way, so he couldn't ar arrive. Uh, so the the train didn't didn't work. So one first thing to do is is to change also the the transportation yeah, and the organization. That is, because of organizational uh, uh, problems, uh, I was not informed that the train would not go to Barcelona from Montpellier. And they could not help us from the train, the conductor and so. And we used then modern technology, you know. There were other people also, and they found out there is blah, blah car and blah, blah, bus. And then we, it took us one hour to make an uh, uh, account there and to reserve a car and then to reserve tickets in the bus and try th that the car just arrives when the bus is over there that, so that we can reach it in per Perpignan. And um, this is something, uh, what, what you see, what is possible. So here, the information technology was used in order to help us with the transportation. And if this would not have been, I would not be here today. So I have to, I have to admit this. So I think uh, if I look at what, what is blah, blah, I'm not sure, but maybe this is a kind of Uber thing, then I would be very critical of it because it is a platform uh, which is located in Los Angeles and it gets, uh, it does not pay taxes, it, 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 it gets much money, it makes much money by that. And this is a kind of platforms, uh, platform capitalism which is also criticized uh, by, by those people I wanted to, to, uh, to, to show you. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, so I think the, tra the, the train example is also very interesting because, uh, for example, a lot of technologies was developed uh, in the connection between the transport and the information technologies in Germany. So turning back to, the, to what Angela Merkel was mentioning, in the past years there was a, a, a process of private, pri privatization and in this process, so the, so the train that was very efficient in Germany, for example, uh, it, it moved to make good business. So it is optimized in order to get a maximal revenue uh, so that the train that that is that provides better revenue uh, is is offered to the people, and, uh, and nevertheless I have to say because I when I always need to check so for train connections I, I look I look in the in the information platform of of the Bundesbank is is good, uh, but it's also interesting that it is not made to make that it is it provided necessary functions. And, and, and this, this lack of implementation is something that is, that is of course, missing. But I, I, I wanted also to express my gratitude and to put it as an example also that even so when the technology may fail, so we have the human factor that Volgan wanted to come, it doesn't matter how. And he didn't sleep today 
and he held the, com the, he, the keynote without sleeping. So I at least want to express my gratitude, even offering such a such an, a, a, a high level view. Um, and turning back also to the point of yesterday of, of making clarifications of the concepts, I'm pretty sure that many of the, of the people coming from the inform, informatics has not uh, understood many of the terms uh, he has given, even when he uses definitions. So, so th there, is, there is a conceptual uh, boundaries, uh, or, or uh, not boundaries, but, but uh, so yeah, front, frontiers and borders that, that we need to jump over. And, uh, and, and then, so it's just to express this invitation to make, to make the, the clarification, because trying to understand uh, the view that he has given, which is a very systematic view, so from system science and from science of, of, of complexity, there are actually many things to discuss, like, for example, what is the, this increase of, of complexity, whether, uh, I, I actually have a question, and is whether uh, developing these function, functionalities or, or, or making this, this idea of, for, for um, the, the, the required variety or the required information, mm -hmm. the required information is connected to the, to, the, to the concept of complexity, how we manage complexity. Mm -hmm. and, and is this actually uh, increasing the complexity or is it decreasing the complexity? Yeah. So uh, for that, uh, we have also a lack of the concept of complexity. Yeah. Maybe. You need to, uh, let's say, um, it's, a, it's a relationship. So there are, pro there are problems which are complex. And uh, in order to solve them, you need to be yourself as complex as the problem is. Yeah. That is, mm -hmm. you need to have knowledge about it in order to solve it. And that is you you increase your own complexity such that it is at least as complex as the problem is or even better or even higher. And so you could say, okay, I have decreased the complexity, but you have this decreased the difference. That's it. But not, uh, but not your own complexity. So I would say uh, uh -huh. leap in, in, in complexity, uh, in your own complexity, looks as from the outset as if uh, complexity would be decreased the overall complexity but it is not yes, it's so in that, a way it yeah. is yeah so for instance Evan Laszlo talked about this so like you have uh, complexification also a complexification sorry you have simplification also that is yeah. every time you increase complexity it's a kind of simplification but you can also put it in the terms of so as this huh? uh, mm -hmm. require required information, mm -hmm. so that what we get is yeah. to manage the yeah. information, yeah. the complexity. Yeah. We get to manage. Yeah. So do you increase the complexity of the system through yeah. the through the level list yeah. and so on, yeah. so that you can get to manage it. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. Is, 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 is Shana? Is it? Sorry. You, you can. Yeah, hi. Um, so, yeah, th th thanks for the presentation. I think it's very thought provoking. And I mean, personally, I, I can't help wondering if, if we're already past that tipping point or not. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, um, my, my question is more on the on the on on myself personally. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a computer science researcher. And um, well, f from what I can see, many of the impacts and applications of information technology in the world haven't really all been that positive. You know, you, you can see that it's led to increased consumerism. Um, the, um, that, it, that in turn leads to much more mining, um, to electronic um, waste. Um, obviously, we can see there's a, not all that positive impact of social media because you know, it's created very radical um, um, political thought processes in society. So, um, how would you suggest that, as a computer science researcher, um, we should adjust our research agenda? Yeah. Uh, I would have talked a little bit about this, but I had to skip it because I was prepared for one hour, not for uh, half an hour. Uh, the important thing is that we, 
we can be critical of what is really happening with our uh, information technology. Uh, I, I want to show you maybe this, this book, which I just had here. It's unfortunately, it's not only known in 2001, and she wrote this book. People have to connect to this. It's super powerful. It has much power mm -hmm. in the net. She wants to be still uh, a realist in that way that we need to do something. And, and we can do certain steps and small steps. Any questions? Sorry uh, for the delay. Uh, the subject is very amazing and actually uh, we finish the keynote session and it's time to coffee coffee break thank you so much i, I just want to point that we will share the slides uh, the complete slides okay uh -huh. so okay. we will we will send the the, the link of the slides thank you <laughs>